as far as I can tell, everything's working. Let's see if I get anybody in this stream to ask, is it working? So until then, I'm going to go on the basis that it is working. As far as I can tell. So I am going to ramble on about a little bit of nothing until I get a few more people. And just to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's one of those fake it till you make it kind of things. So, yeah. Anyway, as far as Linux goes, I've been using Linux to some degree since 1998. I have mentioned that before. The very first one I ever used was the a CD from the back of a computer magazine. A little known, little known distribution called Sousa. S, capital S, period, small u, capital S. I can't remember if the E was capital or not. I installed it and it didn't work. So, the next one I tried was Mandrake. Let's say Mandrake. And it worked, but I never could get the NVIDIA drivers to install. The next one was PC Linux OS. And that one I did get the NVIDIA drivers to install and it worked quite well and used it for a long time. And then a distribution came out known as Ubuntu and I used it for about six months. And then I realized there was a KDE Plasma. No, not Plasma. It was not Plasma at the time. There was a KDE version called Kubuntu and I went to it. I used it for nearly 14 years and then was constantly trying other things I always went back and uh, Manjaro is the one that made me stay so that's a little bit of that as far as ink stitch goes before using ink stitch I didn't know a thing about inkscape nothing wait thank you for that Jean and then and I, I totally apologize for how I pronounce names because I'm not good at pronouncing names. Uh, Dean Tate says it's working, and what do I think about Ubuntu? Um, at one time, I really would have highly recommended Ubuntu. They used to be kind of the leader of the pack, and they were doing new things, making it easier to use Linux. They kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. They're not really uh, the team leader anymore. Honestly, I really don't like Fedora, but Fedora right now seems to be the Linux team leader. I'm not a big fan of Fedora, but I really do like some of the stuff that they're doing. Um, as far as Ubuntu these days with GNOME, not a big fan but they have a great base so if you have some kind of a weird setup something you need a weird driver for ubuntu is probably going to be the one that has it and i will absolutely give ubuntu praise for that another one that's really good with drivers is uh open Sus. they are really good with the drivers and monjero is really good with the drivers the Monjero hardware detection stack is, is actually really good. Uh, not sure about Monjero with obscure things. Dean says, helpful to know. I th I'm thinking about installing Linux. Look at Monjero since you use it a lot. Yes, I love Monjero. But, again, I've been using Linux since 1998 to some degree. I've been using Linux exclusively for about six years I think and mostly because one time I tried to switch back into my dual boot windows and it wouldn't boot into windows some obscure error and I didn't feel like working working around it so I just stayed on Linux and after about a year I decided you know what I haven't booted into windows in a long time and 
I can't boot into Windows anyway, so I just removed that partition and I have not had a dual boot in probably four of those years. So yeah, uh, Linux has gotten really good. Linux has gotten as if you get the right distribution, Monjaro being one of those, Linux is as easy, if not easier, to install than Windows is. And it, I'm not sure how Monjaro does with UEFI Secure Boot. Because I do, I, I turn off Secure Boot because, number one, my computer's in my house. I'm not a government worker. I don't have to worry about Secure Boot. I don't have anything to hide from my own family i don't need it so i turn off the secure the secure boot part of it and yeah so monjaro works great in fact i did a secure boot uefi secure boot on my wife's laptop just because i'd never done it before i wanted to try it out and i installed kubuntu which again i used that for 14 years and anything as far as i know anything ubuntu will do secure boot and i'm pretty sure open Suze does too and fedora i think that might be it i'm not sure anyway i did secure boot on her laptop and i hated it absolutely hated it because every time the kernel did anything you had to put in another password for the secure boot part and you know, I understand passwords and all, but at some point you get passworded to death, man. Just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, and, and if you go to install Monjaro, really, if you decide to go Monjaro, your next decision is desktop environment. GNOME, KDE Plasma, XFCE. Uh, those are kind of the big ones. Those are the ones that are officially supported by Monjaro and then the and then they have a bunch of different community editions and it, it depends on what you're looking for you've you've seen my KDE plasma it works a lot like windows uh, gnome works a lot more like apple mac and i've i've tried it out it's it's not bad it's just not for me but there's a lot of people out there that love it all right I did uh, boom. see in a live I can't edit it that out eh, edited it I did it again um most of my edits when I'm doing recordings are me cutting out my rambling because sometimes I ramble on like talk about the cats fighting in the hallway stuff like that um, I do have one feedback question. All of um, this one's for Ink Stitch. All of my designs are really heavy because I am trying to get complete coverage so the material doesn't show through. Should I remove the underlay? Is there another way to reduce bulk but ensure full coverage? Good question. Good question. And reading the question, I am. I am under the idea that you're doing a patch because if you're not doing a patch, I'm not sure why you would do full coverage. So I'm going to answer this based on the idea that you're doing patches. And in, in patches, you do really need to go from edge to edge. And they're kind of supposed to be heavy. If you're doing, I know that if you have a really large area that is fill, it can get pretty darn heavy real fast. I would, you asked about removing the underlay, and I would kind of play around just for testing sake. I would play around in your case with uh, remove the underlay and then make the overlay a little more dense. And the reason being is that or set a specific underlay because the way ink stitch works oh excellent yes 
It's like a patch. I embroider on towels. Awesome. My wife also embroiders on towels, but not patches. Okay. So what I would suggest is uh, go to your params. You could either turn off the underlay or set a specific underlay because the way it works, Ink Stitch defaults to your underlay is, uh, let me think for a second, it is, I think it's a third of your overlay. So if you have like spacing between rows on the fill stitch is 0.25 and the fill underlay is it default, it's going to default to a 0.75. If I set the spacing between rows on the fill to 0.15, my underlay is now, actually maybe it's half. Yeah, it might be half. You know what, I can test that. I think it's half. So by default, spacing re between rows is 25 and my fill underlay, even though I don't have a number, uh, fill angle inset, row spacing that's the one so right now the underlay i think is half so if i can remember the way that looked my half would be a 0.5 so if it if it previews out the same yeah it didn't change so it is half okay so if i change that to a to a one now it should change i think i broke it okay we'll cancel out of that i'm gonna make i'm gonna make this a little smaller so it doesn't have to think so hard and we'll go back in Okay, now my underlay, row spacing, what is my 0.25, so 0.5 would be the same. It looks the same. So it's half. So whatever your spacing between rows is on your, on your fill stitch, the fill underlay is going to default on its own to half of that. Is it the same? It is not the same. 0.75. I'll get it right in a minute. That's what it is. So 0 0.25, 0 0.75. That's times three, is that right? Anyway, as you're trying to create a more dense patch, try on the fill stitch, try cutting that down to maybe a 0.15. See how much thicker that is. And then honestly, try just unchecking the underlay. And to avoid that line underneath, if it's thick enough, you won't see that line. So it shouldn't be a problem. What is, okay. You don't want to go much less than a, than a 0.15. For the same reason that you don't want your, your uh, satin stitch width to be much less than a 1.5. Needle starts getting too close together and it, it machine doesn't like that much. Okay, let me know if I answered your question at all. I know I did some rambling. Usually I can cut that out, but not all live. This is my first live. Kind of fun. I may have to do this again. Um, so I figured as a backup what I'll do. 
if I don't have enough people in here to keep me busy in questions. Jean says, great, thank you. We'll try that out. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining my live stream. I know it feels lonely out there, but you would just consider yourself just consider yourself one of the one of the new adventurers. You're a trendsetter. <laughs> There is a couple of questions on some videos that I've did on YouTube that I can answer. Um, oh, and, and I do have a correction. In the last video where I mentioned that Ink Stitch I just released and I said it released on the 20, I think I said 27th. The, one of the developers said that was an error on the website and it was not the 27th. It has just released as of yesterday, as far as I know. Okay. I know. And yeah, doing the video on that, on that new version where you can, where you can select the order of your stacks it's just that's great that is just great uh okay back to a linux question what the crap is kde wallet i i did answer this yeah i agree i love kde plasma i've hated kde wallet for a long time uh hold on gene and i'll get right back to you and I said that you can use a blank password to get around that. So I'm going to load a wallet manager in settings, configure wallet. Uh, I think it's in here. A wallet launch wallet manager. Wallet manager is already launched. You know what? I don't remember where it is. Somewhere in here you can change. Maybe it's that one. Oh. Automatic wallet sessions. Hey, wallet new. No, nope, I don't remember how to do it. Oh, right there it is. Duh. Right there it is. Change password. You click change password. You set it to nothing like it is right now. I hit OK. K wallet will never bother you again. And it'll still do what it's supposed to do. Um, Gene Tate, what color bar options are you using on the bottom of your Inkscape? I like the color options. I'm wondering if my Windows version has that same option. It should, actually. The color bar options that I'm using right now is... Moderna, Madeira, 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 Poly Neon. That is the color bar options that I'm using, and I'm also using two rows, and I have a third row that I do have option to. And you can click on that, click on that little button there to bring up your list, and then hit configure, and then you can change. I've got rows two. Uh, border of one so there's a little bit of separation in between each color and then you can change tile size aspect ratio and all that i could set my i could set my rows to three and then i wouldn't have to scroll so that is an option if you want to do that um that is the color palette that i am choosing because according to my wife that is the most recent set of um threads that she purchased for the machine so i'm using that uh ink stitch madeira poly neon all righty um there was another one here um this was a question that i posted quite some time ago on that video of switching to kmail from thunderbird 
can you just turn on notifications for Thunderbird? In Linux, as far as I know, doesn't default Thunderbird doesn't actually have notifications, and you have to install a little plugin called BirdTray, and BirdTray does not work on Wayland, which I've been using for quite a while now. Answered that doesn't work on Wayland. No response. Okay, this one I definitely wanted to address in this video on the uh, video I did quite some time ago, an easier way to make a satin font just by drawing your line, setting the thickness, and then converting it to a satin stitch. Doesn't matter, says. I keep getting an error message. Only simple lines may be converted to satin columns. When I try to convert my lines to satin, how do I fix this issue? My response is, I'm, I'm guessing that you're doing something by trace bitmap. So I'm going to make a real quick bit, a real quick PNG. And let's give that a stroke of five. I'm going to save, I'm going to export as a PNG, home buzz bitmap PNG, that works. Yes, replace, I don't know what I just replaced, but it's gone now. And then go ahead and delete that. Now import. Here, wasn't it? Yes. Hit open. And then path trace bitmap. Uh, we'll try to get the best one that we can get. It's probably grays is going to be fine. Uh, hit apply. Let's see if it's behind there. It is. So which one of these? going to delete the image that I imported now we can work with this and this will not convert to a satin stitch anytime you do a trace in a bitmap you cannot turn that trace into a satin stitch ink stitch tool satin convert line to satin going to get that same error only simple lines may be converted to satin columns so that is why there's another question I got. I don't know if I'll be able to find it real quick, but another question that I got was, why do I do so much manual tracing when I'm creating logos and such? Why don't I do trace bitmap more often? And using trace bitmap really depends on what you want for an outcome if you and, and what you're using for the, the picture. The couple of trace bitmaps that I've done were bright colors. Bright, very solid colors. Like the butterfly. Butterfly turned out great, but none of that could be converted into a satin stitch. Except for the outline could. I could do an outline on this. So that's that's something else that you can think about is do you want to do an outline? So I'm gonna set a stroke and I'm gonna get rid of the fill. So now I could turn that stroke on the outside into a satin stitch something like that now i could turn that into a satin stitch i don't think it'll turn out to be a very good satin stitch but i can turn that one into a satin stitch Ooh, that is messy Ooh. I'm going to undo. That would be hard to figure out. That would be hard to fix. Okay, another thing that I decided I could do in this video is sometimes when you have a circle or an O, like when you're doing font letters, you might have an O like this. 
I'm going to go ahead and make it bigger to show you what I'm doing here. And we'll set the stroke to five. So pretend this is a letter O that I'm creating for a satin stitch font. Now I'm going to convert it into a satin line to satin. I've probably got things here. Do a break apart. Okay, do a break apart. Why would I need to do a break apart? Let's try this again. I need to use that, don't I? You'd think I'd know this by now. Ah, nice pretty O. I'm going to select the nodes tool, hit control A to select all, and that button to make them curve. Yeah, I'm just making a little rough representation. Give me a five. Yeah, that works. So now let's convert it into a satin stitch. Now. Every single time I ever try to convert a big circle like this into a satin stitch, it always becomes two separate halves. You can create one half. I'm going to select both of those, do a path, and simplify. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. So we can, we can work with that a little easier. I'm going to zoom in to where they are broken apart, which is right here. I need to select both of those again. Now, I still have the node tool selected, and I'm going to select, multiple select both of these. There's a tool up here that's called Join Selected Nodes, and I'm going to join those two nodes together. I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. Now, down here at the bottom, you notice that there's a, there's a strange thing going on here. I'm going to click off, click back on, and it looks like these two can go away. I'm just going to delete those two nodes. Zoom in a little bit so I can see what's happening. Okay. Now we're good. Okay, I'm going to select both of these and do that join selected nodes again. And now they're one object, but I still have two paths. Okay, so now what we can do, we have both of those, we can do a, a, uh, a combine i think it's a combine and now it's one unit go into extensions ink stitch params ah. there it is so once you do that i have removed the auto satin i just need to reset the satin column So now instead of two halves of a satin column circle, I have one. Outstanding. Well, I have eight, I have eight viewers. Thank you, eight viewers. Okay, let's go back to our replies. Adonis Crack, hi. Hi, Adonis. Okay, this one here. I did a article on my website for this one. Hi, while I was working on so a somehow, all of my paths disappeared. Layer still shows, but none of the paths are under it. 
So my guess is what happened. This is a guess that you're using the most recent Inkscape. So in the most recent Inkscape, um, objects, layers and objects, layer, layers and objects, those are now one thing. I'm expecting that some point in the future, one of these menu options will go away now that they are both essentially taking you to the same exact place, which is right here. So you have a layer, and I can click on this button right here, to this one right here, to create a new layer. And I can click on this button right here to switch to layers only. So I still see my layer, but all of my objects are gone. So it's just a matter of re-clicking that button right there. That's my guess. Something really super easy and simple and you know, don't feel bad because honestly, I don't know Inkscape other than what I use it for in Ink Stitch. So there's a lot of people out there that will tell me, reply to things that I do or send me a, a private message of some sort and tell me, hey, this is an easier way to do what you're doing in Inkscape. And I so appreciate that because I really don't know Inkscape that well. Uh, this one is one day ago. I can't figure out how to cut out spaces on a fill stitch layer in order to have a word stitched out, stitched on it without being thick. Any suggestions? I'm trying to make a patch, but the words are not stitching on the first layer stitching well on the first layer. Uh, I pointed the user to one of my cutout, cutout videos and I'm going to just go ahead and hit that again just real quick. If you have a, a fill object and then you want to put letters on top of it. I believe I did that with a K. How about that? Okay, hit bold, hit apply. Stretch that out a little bit. Now I want this, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my objects. I want this to be cut out from the layer underneath. This would not be too thick, but depending on your machine, and also, and I didn't mention this in the reply, but uh, it could be a sign that your needles are getting dull and you do have to replace needles every now and then. I don't know how often. I really don't. My wife does most of the stitches part. I just I go out there and throw a couple of pieces of fabric in between a magnetic snap, put it in, run it. If I have problems, I come get her. This is This is my side of it. This is the part that I love, and that's the part that she loves. So it works out really well. It's actually a great symbiosis. Anyway, what you will have to do when you do a cutaway using difference, path difference, whatever you difference out is going to go away. So if you want this low tech to stay, I need to duplicate that low tech. Now I have two of them. Snap that back. So I'm going to select that one and the purple underneath it, go to path, difference. Now it's cut out. So now that's how you would get it to stitch. And we'll go ahead and do a visualize. Oops, I'm going to visual, visualize only that one layer. Okay, ink stitch, visualize. Simulate a realistic preview. And then I will speed this up. I still only 
simulated. Oh, I know why. I did not set that text to something that Ink Stitch would recognize because in order to do that, I need to do object path and then I need to do a break apart. Fill, break apart. Simple should work fine. Hit close. Now we should be able to see it all. It's been a while since I've worked with fill, fill stitch lettering, so I actually forgot briefly, ever so briefly. Moment. Okay, so we got black down here in this preview line. It should fill out now. Much better. Much better. All right. Highlight everything. Go away. Let's see. What is the state of Wayland for NVIDIA? Right now, honestly, don't know. I use AMD graphics. So. I have no horse in that NVIDIA race. I know I listen to a lot of podcasts. They say that NVIDIA is. They have actually worked on a driver that uses something that Waylon needs. And everything's supposed to end up all peachy and glory for NVIDIA. They are also going to open source not the whole driver, but some specific part of the driver for Linux will be uh, open source. I think that's the part that recognizes your card and says, I need this driver to work and actually goes and finds that driver on your computer. So it should, it should work a lot better, especially when it comes to hibernate and such. But I know that NVIDIA, they, they are really kind of starting to step up their game on the Linux side of things. So that is really good. I don't know if the NVIDIA driver that works with Wayland is out yet. Uh, that user is using Arch. So if it's out, it should be available on Arch. That's the way Arch works. I said, please let me know. I haven't heard back yet. <laughs> this one's funny. Uh, my very first satin fonts, I named it part one. And I did a lot of satin font videos after that, but I never named one part two. I apologize for that. You know, I'm a truck driver. Just, just keep that in mind that I'm a truck driver. So I just really like science and technology. And computers. Uh, thank you, everybody that's telling me thank you. Thank you for the kind words. It really makes me love and enjoy doing the videos that I do. It really does. Thank you very much. Um, the video I did for uh, knockdown stitches do your needle. Have any problems stitching through all the layering it and in, in my case my test case no um i know in this video in this video what i did is i told you to do a knockdown using one layer going in go into extensions ink stitch params Oh, grab it. And then turning off the underlay. And then setting the spacing. I don't remember what I said to set the spacing at, but it was a high number. It may have been one. I don't remember what it was. We'll just say one. And then use a angle on that. And get rid of the underpass so you don't have that line. Hit apply and quit. And then I told you to duplicate that. 
And is that my duplicate? I guess. Go back into params. Keep everything the way it was. Um, but switch the angle. Yeah. Switch the angle around. So that you have a wide array of stitches in two different directions. Now, if you forget to turn off that underlay, so now you, if you forget to turn off that underlay, you're, you're basically end up with four levels of stitching. So if you do it this way, do not forget to turn off that underlay. There is also another way that I've been considering making a video for, and I'll mention it real quick here, is just using one, but in your, in your, uh, Rams. Turn your fill underlay back on. I have a uh, spacing between rows one and angle is 45. So on the underlay, I'm going to do a row spacing of one and I'm going to do a fill angle the other way. And get rid of that underpath. So now you only have one object that's actually what is doing the same thing that I was using two objects to do. And I think this is a little bit cleaner. I like this better. I just haven't made a video for it yet. Uh, and, and I will. I'm going to do a specific video with this in mind. Do a test stitch on it and show how it turns out. But that is another way to do knockdown stitches. Uh, how long am I into this? Forty-five minutes. Go oh, another fifteen or so, maybe. I'm having fun. I've got five five concurrent viewers and four likes. Thank you guys. I am stoked. I'm a happy trucker right now. That's trucker. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, that one is on using pipe wire on Ubuntu. That it didn't work for him. Still loads Pulse Audio. Him, Robert. Assuming him, I apologize if I'm incorrect. Uh, anyway, the great thing is, uh, Ubuntu, and I'm guessing it's family of derivatives, but Ubuntu is going full pipe wire on the next release. That is outstanding and awesome. I'm very happy about that. I will be testing that. They probably, what is the next? 22... 22.04, next one's 22.10, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're still four months out. Four months out from that next release. So they may not have gotten in there yet. I'm going to do some development version testing to see if it's there yet. And if, if I can catch it when it hits, the development version, I will make a video on that. And I will praise Ubuntu for finally going on Pipewire. Pipewire is awesome. And for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, I apologize. It's audio server on Linux. Okay. Uh, thank you for your tutorials. Again, everybody is saying thank you. Thank you. I thank you. Uh, even though I'm using Windows, your process makes understanding both sides of the software come to me more fluidly. Um, as far as I know, Inkstitch and Inkscape are almost a 100% same, the same between Mac, Windows, and Linux. I know some of the videos that I've watched on Mac, there's a few different things here and there, but overall it's, for the most part, it's the same. The, I don't know about Windows and Mac, but I know on Linux, when you're trying to make that right arrow, when you're doing a custom font, 
that right arrow on Linux to make is a massive pain in the butt. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, let's go into, I'm going to close out my file browser. We'll go into preferences, uh, user extensions, open up user extensions, right there's ink stitch, right there's fonts, open up one of these fonts, right there's one of those right arrows. I'm going to rename. Be careful what you do here and do not rename it, but I am going to right click. Okay. And then copy. So now I have just copied that arrow. Come back out of it. I didn't change anything. I canceled my rename. And now if I want to make. Now if I want to make a file, create new file. I can name it by pasting that right arrow. Or if I already have a file there, then I can select rename and I can paste that right arrow in. All of that stuff that I just did is easier than creating a right arrow in Linux. So I don't know how it is for you guys in Windows and Mac. It's a pain in Linux. Anyway, that's where I'm at on that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Let's go back. 48 minutes, so at about, we'll go until, we'll go until four or five Eastern time. Uh, let's see. Uh, cool and laid back. That's the way I like to be. Hope they released those fonts. Thanks for the sneak peek. Your hopes and dreams have been realized. They are released to the masses. And there's some nice ones in there, too. I'm still going to make. I know I've been threatening for like six months to make a small font. I'm still going to do that. Might be another six months, but eventually I'm going to do that. Thanks for the video. Thank you for commenting. Uh, been trying to figure this out. So art has so many pattern choices and I wanted to figure out how to make my own. This is exactly what I was looking to do. Awesome. That's on the uh, stitch patterns, pattern fill stitches. Uh, I know nothing about sew art, but glad this is working for you. Quick question. When I use the fill bucket tool on a circle and try embroider my design, it can take a while to fill depending on the size. Is there a way, any way, perhaps, to lower the quality of the filled color to make an embroider faster? Um, yeah, ink stitch params, check your density. And bucket fill, is that a bucket fill? I wonder if that changes. I don't know. Extensions ink stitch params. Grab it, pull it out. Me grabbing it and pull it to the side, as far as I know, is just a Linux thing. It's specifically a Linux Wayland thing. So right now I have 4,724 stitches in this. So I'm not sure. I'm really not sure what you're bucket filling. Because if you have an object, you can just select a color no need to bucket fill i'm not i don't think i think maybe i'm not understanding the question properly and if that's the case i apologize uh, but you can go into params and decrease the stitch count and i guess i could have showed you that while i had it up so i'll go back in params spacing between rows when i say density when I say Hillshire, okay. <laughs> when I say density, I'm speaking specifically of spacing between rows. Uh, making it more dense is taking that number down. Making it less dense is taking that number up. 
So I have 611 stitches. If I want less density, I would take that number up to a 0.5. Now I have 343. So when you make it less dense, you're going to have your underneath fabric showing through. And it depends on how much of that you want. Okay. Okay. Let's get a couple more in here. Thanks for the great tutorials to help zooming. Try keyboard shortcuts. Five for page view. Four to all objects view. Three for selected objects. That's absolutely true. And the reason that I don't is because I'm not because I don't know Inkscape except for Ink Stitch. And I know those are there. And the reason I know those are there is because I've accidentally hit them in the past. So number one, what do you say? Number one is page view. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Five is page view. Five, four, oh, wait. Three, didn't do anything. Two, and one. And you know the one that kills me. The one that I hate the most is when I accidentally spin it. How do I do that? Control, nope. Oh, I think it's control and press the mouse wheel. Nope. Shift and press. You know what? I don't even know how I'm doing it. I thought I knew how I was doing it by accident, but I'm, apparently I don't. But it spins. It's so hard for me to get back. Anyway. Hello, Space Cucumber. Welcome to the party. Small party. For now. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Team XORG before watching the video. Man, Wayland's awesome. There's still a few things that I miss here and there. Just minor nitpicking things that I miss about X. But as far as how well my machine runs... Wayland is awesome. Uh, <laughs> 12 days ago, I should create a Facebook group so people can ask questions. I linked the Facebook group. And currently, the Facebook group has 700 and something people. 768 members. I also have a Reddit there's also a Reddit because I know not everybody wants to be on Facebook. Sometimes I don't want to be on Facebook, but I do have a Reddit that is not near as active. There are 189 members. That's good. Um, most of the time, there's not usually a lot of activity in here. I did get six upvotes on that video for the uh, preview of the new release. Watching your videos lately, it really helped me a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Space Cucumber. You just, it means a lot to me to get thanks. It really does make it worth it. I love the interaction that I get. I try my best to reply to everybody on, on the YouTubes and the Facebooks and the Reddits because I love the interaction. I really do. And when I throw a video together and I upload it, the worst part for me about making a video is the render time. When I edit and then I click render video, this computer is not a super massive computer and it takes a while. So that's my worst, that's my worst part about making videos. But when I start seeing, you know, the thumbs up, hey, good job, or, you know, the re the comments saying, dude, this helped me out, thank you. I love that, so thank you for that, Space Cucumber. Thank you. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I have an ink stitch. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash ink stitch. For those that don't want to be on Facebook, and if you don't want to be on Facebook, I fully understand. Hey, Gus. Awesome. Ah, you know what? I knew Gus would have the answer. Gus is awesome. Gus Visor, and I'm absolutely certain I'm saying his name wrong. 
but um, you can lock your rotation in the preference window. Of course you can. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to see if I can find that real quick. Rotation. Uh -huh. See, I'm lost already. I don't know Inkscape. Rotation. Lock. Oh, here it is. Lock canvas rotation by default. Prevent accidental canvas rotation. You know what? They, this most recent version might have that set by default. Um, this most most recent version of Inkscape might have that set by default because now that I think about it, I haven't accidentally rotated my canvas since the new version. So, um, Inkscape devs, if that's the case, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, Rocchio Vera. I apologize for the name pronunciations, folks. Uh, I watched them and rewatched them. Thank you. Thank you, Rocchio. Rocchio. Yo. You know what? I'm, I'm a hillbilly truck driver. Come on. All right. Um, cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining in. <laughs> I'm having a blast. I really am. This is cool. <laughs> uh, we are almost at an hour. I'm not going to quit yet. I'm having fun. I'll answer a few more of these questions. Uh, <laughs> muchas gracias. Oh, Space Cucumber. Dude. Muchas gracias. De nada. Uh, yeah, I had a long thread here for, uh, broken links in the templates. What I did is I changed servers on my website and I tried to do all the automatic stuff, pulling everything in. It looked like it pulled everything in, but it didn't pull anything that was linked. So I had to re-upload all of the templates and then I had to allow WordPress to use SVG. It's just all of, as far as I know, all of the templates are fixed. Oh my goodness. Space Cucumber speaks four languages, man. I'm good to speak one. I barely even speak English. That is awesome. That is so cool. Man, I'm, that is awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, here's the one I was mentioning earlier. I uh, love this, but why didn't you trace bitmap, bitmap instead of drawing? Uh, just asking because I'm not good at manually creating satin stitches. When you do a trace bitmap, you can't turn those into a satin stitch. So that was the reason that I, I took that template for the fats cafe and i did the entire thing by drawing it out every bit of it except for i think i did the cafe as was yeah, i don't remember if i did the cafe or not but uh, all of that design was drawn out turned into a satin stitch because you can't satin stitch a trace bitmap as far as i know if i'm incorrect on that i fully expect and would appreciate Gus to tell me otherwise, but I think I'm right on that. Gus is awesome. Uh, ran into a problem while trying to use a satin stitch that is stitched over a different object. Tells me that the satin stitch has a fill. Uh, I said make sure the object in question has no fill in the fill and stroke edit box. Didn't get a response on that. I don't know if that worked for that person or not. But if you're trying to do what I'm, what I told them to do is go into the fill and stroke and make sure that fill is X'd out. You X that fill out. There is no fill. And then you give it stroke. 
now you can get, turn that stroke. What I'm guessing happened is that they had fill and stroke, I guess. But I never got a response, didn't have any any more interaction. So that's that. Okay, this person installed pipe wire on Manjaro. And that fixed the wireless headset issue. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. See, that's what I love to do about these video with these videos. I love passing on when I learn something new. I'm just, you know, honestly, I'm just learning it either from another source or I tried something and went, hey, this worked great. Check this out. And then I can pass it on to you guys and spread the love, man. Just spread the love. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go out on this one. I'm going to go out on this one. This is my niece. No, it's not. Where did that come from? This is my step granddaughter. And she is playing a game that I made. By using the Godot engine or Godot engine, however you prefer to pronounce it, I created a little. This is my granddaughter playing a game that I made for her as a pastime. So we're going to go out on a cute note. Guys, she seems to be a tad busy right now. So we appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, everybody that came in. I am going to do this again. This was fun. I didn't know. I, I don't know. I still don't know if I'm doing it right, but guys give me great hope that it all came across right i'm hoping that when i end this video i don't accidentally delete it i don't know what to do next because i've never done this before so <laughs> if i do it right this will be available to rewatch later on <laughs> thank you space cucumber um space cucumber says this is awesome me too, man. I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, I will do this again. This is cool. Anyway, y'all, thanks for joining. Everybody that's going to watch it later, thanks for watching. You guys have made a an old truck driver happy. This is fun. Until next time, guys. That's it for now.